Describe a polite person that you know. You should say who he or she is, how you know him or her, what he or she is like, and explain why you think he or she is polite. I feel great to be surrounded by well-mannered friends as I really aim to make friends with people who are respectful and kind. Whenever I'm with them, I feel like I'm also a very good person and it encourages me to improve myself for the better as well. Anyway, in our circle, we have a friend who was originally brought up in Japan. His name is Yuya. He is actually half-blooded, his mom is Japanese, and his dad is Filipino. He is actually the most polite among us, not to mention the youngest. Every time we meet up for lunch or dinner, he never fails to bow as it's his way of showing his respect to us all. I really like that gesture as I find it unique, which is very different from our own culture. Also, I've noticed that he avoids butting in during our discussion or conversation. He always makes sure to let the other person finish talking first before speaking. That I believe is very important to avoid misunderstanding, confusion, or any conversation related problem. In our culture, interfering with someone is acceptable to some extent, especially when you need to correct what someone is saying. But for our friend, he never does that. In addition, he doesn't directly say no, and I learned that in their culture, they avoid rejecting someone or something outright because they don't want to offend or make someone feel bad. They care about the other person's feelings. It was really hard for us, his friends, to understand him in the beginning. However, as time went by, we learned how to feel when he doesn't like something but can't say no to us directly. Having him as our friend who has a very different culture makes us learn the importance of politeness or respect and that helps us make our bond stronger. Let's move on to part 3. What's the standard of being polite? Well, since politeness is synonymous with being respectful, in my opinion, it is when one knows how to show respect to others and knows how to keep one's temper in a stressful situation. More often than not, people speak ill of someone when they are angry, and that's not being polite or mature. Politeness comes with respect and dealing with difficult people or situations in a more mature way. That for me is the standard of politeness. What behavior will be regarded as impolite? There are so many different examples of impoliteness, however, I'd like to mention the common ones such as disrespecting the elderly, bad-mouthing one's parents, asking two personal questions to someone, and not greeting one's boss. These are just a few examples of the many examples of impoliteness that some people show to others. I really feel upset every time I see people, especially the young, who never make any effort in showing good manners to others. Being respectful doesn't cost a thing. Why do some people fail to show politeness to others? I just can't understand. Do you think people in the countryside are more polite than those in cities? I don't think so because being well-mannered does not depend on where you come from. One can be polite even if he lives in slum areas, and one who lives in a mansion can be so disrespectful or the other way around. What I'm trying to say is that being polite or respectful is the result of how one is brought up by his parents and his own judgment on what is acceptable and unacceptable behavior. If one is impolite or ill-mannered, I can say that his parents partly failed to raise him to be well-mannered. And we can also blame the person himself for letting himself be influenced by ill-mannered friends. So I must say, the person's residence has nothing to do with his demeanor. What do you think makes people polite? This actually varies from culture to culture. In our own culture, it's polite to use some endearment to our brothers or sisters, especially if they are older. We also use some endearment to a stranger like a taxi driver 
when talking with them. It sounds strange to others, but that's our culture. So I can't give a one-size-fits-all answer to this question. However, like I said earlier, politeness is synonymous with being respectful. So I believe when one is showing respect to others, he is polite. Let's have the second cue card. Describe a time you had to wait in line for a long time. You should say when it was, where you were, why you were there, and explain how you felt about it. Just last weekend, our family craved fast food since for the past two weeks, we had been strictly eating healthy food. Our family unanimously decided to have a cheat day last Sunday, and we reached a decision to buy burgers and fries at KFC over pizzas at Domino's. Because it was Sunday, we already thought that it's not ideal to dine in at KFC as it would be crowded and as you know, with the current situation of our world, it's not advisable to be in packed places. So we agreed to order at the drive through of KFC. When we got closer to the fast food restaurant, we were surprised by the long queue of cars at a drive through The line was incredibly longer than we thought. My dad and I were having second thoughts of whether to fall in line or find another restaurant but my mom insisted on sticking to our plan. So my mom had a final say. I was kinda bored while waiting into my boredom, I counted a number of cars in front of us. I was so surprised that there were 13 cars. I was thinking that it would take so much time until we are served. But I didn't say a word as I didn't want my mom to feel upset for making the decision so I distracted myself by chatting with some of my friends who were online at that time and it did help me entertain myself that I lost track of the time. To cut a long story short, we waited for almost 15 minutes and we're all hungry as a bear. Funnily enough, my mom cracked a joke saying that it's not all the time that mothers knew best. My dad and I simply burst out laughing. Let's proceed to answering part 3 questions. Do people in your country often wait in line? Not always. I believe only during special occasions like Christmas, New Year, or when there is an important public event. During those times, you can see a huge number of people queuing at restaurants, shops, amusement parks, and the like. Besides, stations are incredibly crowded and people flood downtown streets. If you aren't patient enough, it's advisable not to go out during those times as you will just lose your temper. Other than that, we don't normally wait in line when it's an ordinary day. Although sometimes in some government offices, we need to wait in line as some of the offices are not systematic. Do you think the development of technology has reduced the time people spend on waiting? Definitely. For instance, in the past, people need to fall in line at ticket booths in stations to buy a bus or a train ticket. However, these days, commuters can buy tickets online or they can use their credit or debit card to simply tap it on a machine at stations so they can get access to buses or trains. That's way more convenient. In some countries, people don't need to go inside a shop or a supermarket to buy something, especially when they are in a rush, because vending machines are almost everywhere. Or if they need to go inside a supermarket, they don't need to fall in line at the cashier because there's self-checkout. The development of technology has significantly improved the lives of people. What do you think of those who cut in line or jump the gear? They simply lack manners. No well-mannered and rational man would like to cut in line as it's not just the right thing to do. However, in some cases, cutting in line is acceptable when there is a special reason. Like when a person politely asks here if he can jump the queue because there is an emergency. In that situation, people are forgiving and letting others be served first and I'm also okay with that. How can companies improve their customer service? As I once worked at the customer service department before, the ultimate way to improve the customer service of a company is to listen to their customers. 
I mean, they have to understand the negative or the constructive reviews of the customers and diligently make time to address the complaints of every customer who expresses their disappointment with the service or the product that the company offers. When they work on improving their service or product, customers will surely be happy or satisfied. As a result, they will gain more loyal customers. Here are some videos that can help you prepare better in your IELTS speaking exam. Spend time learning the ideas and tips shared on these videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support this channel, just click subscribe and like. Thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Until the next lesson, have a lovely day.